Welcome to another Witcher lore video. I was considering what video to make today when I realized that it's been quite a few months since I last made a video on the dwarves in the Witcher universe, so I've decided to make today's video on the Vivaldi Bank. It is also important to note that I will say that today's video is not on certain members of the Vivaldi family or the Vivaldi family in general, it is simply on their bank. However, I will make those videos in the future. To begin with, the Vivaldi Bank is one of the most prestigious banks in the known world, and it was founded by the Vivaldi family, which is a family of dwarves. This bank has many branches in the important cities of the Northern Kingdoms. For example, they are known to have banks in cities such as Novigrad and Vengerberg. Those are all the branches we know that the Vivaldi Bank has for certain, but it is also possible that they have branches in the cities of Murviel and Vizima. They do definitely have a branch in Vizima in the game lore, as we actually get to go there in The Witcher 1, but it is not confirmed in the book lore. They can also get a branch in Oxenfurt, but that depends on what you, the player, decide in game. In the Novigrad branch of this bank, it is led by the dwarf Vimy Vivaldi, who you can meet in The Witcher 3, and is actually mentioned mentioned in the Witcher books a fair amount. In this branch, Geralt is able to exchange any florins or orins he finds into crowns. It is possible for Geralt to take out a loan with the bank, but he can only have one loan at a time, so you would have to pay back your previous loan before getting a new one. This bank has been known to serve many merchants, for example in the Sword of Destiny there is a story surrounding the merchant, Dainty Biberveld and the Doppler Dudu. It is revealed in this story that Dainty's bank is the Vivaldi bank. If you want to find this bank in-game, it is located in the main Novigrad Market Square. Just west of the Hierarch Square signpost, it is the building with the large signs hanging in front of it, and these signs look like coins. There's actually quite a funny quest in the Witcher 3 Hearts of Stone DLC involving this bank, and this is the quest known as the Taxman Cometh. In this quest, a taxman known as Walthamore Mitty will approach the player if they possess 35,000 crowns or more. He will then ask three questions. The first question is if the player has engaged in the wholesale of rawhide in White Orchard. The second is if the player has ever gathered seashells and dismantled them for pearls. And the third is if the player has ever stolen. If yes is answered to two or more of these inquiries, the player is told they must pay a thousand crowns in tax to the Vivaldi Bank in Novigrad. The the player can then go and pay this sum to Vimy Vivaldi, and the first two questions that the taxman asks are actually in reference to exploits in The Witcher 3. I won't get fully into each exploit, but I did actually discuss the first exploit, and this was the Rawhide exploit, in quite a bit of detail in my chort video. As for the Vizima branch of this bank, I think it is best if I simply read to you The Witcher 1 journal entry on it. Like any large city, Vizima also has a branch of the dwarf-owned Vivaldi and Sons Bank. It is located in a sturdy building with thick stone walls. Guards armed to the teeth watch the armoured safes, while wealthy clients can count on discreet, professional service. The bank is renowned, and so its reputation did not suffer when rumours began circulating of a hostile takeover. Apparently the bank's owner was having financial problems, and an anonymous investor took advantage. In The Witcher 1, this branch of the bank was also taken over by humans, before then it was run by Golem Vivaldi. There are two side quests as associated with it, the first is known as Gold Rush, and the second is known as The Source. And just one point I'd like to mention, I do feel as if the Vivaldis probably have a branch in every single city in the Northern Kingdoms, potentially maybe in somewhere like Kovia as well, it's just I've basically told you all the ones that have been revealed to us outright. I'm just saying this is a bit of speculation, it's not actual fact they have a bank in every single city, or at least every single important city, but I would say it's likely. Finally, in Vergen, Geralt can meet the dwarf known as Igor Vivaldi, who is in Vergen on the bank's business. He was there to check how profitable Vergen's mine may be. He also tells Geralt that all of the bank's agents are told that if they should encounter the Witcher, he is to be given unlimited credit. Honestly, I always love the idea of having a dwarven bank in fantasy universes. I think it's quite a cool thing. Obviously, dwarves have quite a lot of association with mining and gold and all the rest, so it just, it kind of all fits, and I just, I really like it. I think it's a cool part of the lore. So I hope you've all learned something new today anyway about this bank, as I'm sure you'll all have been there in The Witcher 3 to exchange your florins and orins. As always, guys, if you've enjoyed today's Witcher lore video and want to see more, be sure to like today's video, as it does genuinely help, and it lets me know that you want to 
see more of these sorts of videos and that you just want to support the channel. So thank you to every single one of you that does that. Also, if this is the first video you're finding on my channel, be sure to subscribe. I do Witcher lore videos every week. I alternate an Elder Scrolls and Middle Earth lore video or, you know, it's sort of random. It's kind of like a random lore video day, but it's those two at the moment. So be sure to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. I also do Witcher parts. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I do updates on there whenever anything interesting is happening with the channel. And I also just put updates on there whenever videos are coming out and things. So it's basically like a second opportunity just in case you miss it in your subscriptions and you want to see the lore videos and things like that. So be sure to follow me on there. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I'll get back to streaming on there at some point. I'm not sure when. I'm very, very busy at the moment and I've got a lot on. So we'll see if I can get back to it. It'd probably just be the sort of thing that when one day I think, you know what, I want to stream today. I'll just stream on there. Maybe I could do something around holiday times and stuff like that. So if you don't want to miss any of those streams, I'd recommend recommend going and following me on Twitch. Also, be sure to join the Reddit and Discord, post stuff in the Reddit. I might even do like a Reddit-based sort of video in the future where I look at what you guys post, just as I think it's cool to do that sort of community-type video, as it, I genuinely think it's quite a fun thing, to be honest. So if you want to post stuff in there, start to sort of build it up a bit, then I can eventually try and do a video in the future. And also in the Discord, we have chats there every day. There's an RP section, there's a picture section, there's like music, there's loads and loads of stuff in there, so be sure to go and check it out. There's over 700 members on there now. A lot of people, so you can probably meet someone new there. Finally guys, as always, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges. You guys are honestly amazing and you help me out so much. I just want to say thank you to every single one of you. It's very, very kind what you do. I just, you know, thank you all so much. It's really awesome. <laughs> anyway guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Have an awesome rest of the week.